We don't always like to admit it, but recovery changes as we get older. And it happens slowly, right? We don't realize it. And then next thing you know, you look back, you're like, why do I not recover from this workout the way that I used to? So over the age of even 40, 45, 50, we got to start paying close attention to a number of different things, namely uh, myofibrillar protein synthesis, our overall recovery, sometimes our growth hormone levels. And this is for men and women. So let's go ahead and dive in on what people that are over 45 or 50 can start doing to boost overall recovery and just feel better. So after today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seeds Daily Symbiotic. I'm a huge fan. It's the only probiotic that I personally use. And the interesting thing is, is they publish a lot of their own literature. So they publish their own clinical trials. And sometimes it doesn't work in their favor, but they publish it anyway because they are honest. And that's what I appreciate about them. But interestingly enough, it's the only probiotic that has this multi-stage delivery system where it has a capsule inside of a capsule. So when you think about probiotics, it's easy to think supplement company sham. But the reality is, is there is not a whole lot more in the world of supplements that is more vetted out than probiotic usage. The problem is most are destroyed in the gut. So that's what I like about Seed is they put their money where their mouth is with their technology, with their clinical trials, and also just with overall customer service and a quality product. So that link is down below for 25% off Seed's Daily Symbiotic. The first one is again, we have to look at that myofibrillar protein synthesis. Okay, so that is also muscle protein synthesis. Like how much uh, we synthesize protein to repair our muscle even after a light workout. You see, even a light workout is still inducing muscle trauma and we need to recover properly. And you may not feel it directly, but it's one of those things that just has kind of a low grade inflammation effect if you're not recovering from it. So there's a study that was published in the journal Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. One of my favorite studies is very interesting. It took a look at master's level triathletes versus younger triathletes. And it took muscle biopsies, so muscle samples uh, at the beginning, at baseline, and then it had them go through three days of their normal sort of endurance training. And then at the end of the three days, it took another muscle biopsy. So it actually looked at like cross-sectional area, looked at the muscle itself. They found that in the master's level group, that muscle protein synthesis or myofibrillar protein synthesis was at 1.49%. The younger group was at 1.7%. That sounds like a negligible difference, but I'm telling you, physiologically speaking, as far as MPS goes, that is significant. So much less myofibrillar protein synthesis in the older group. They synthesized less protein for actual recovery. But then when they had them do the workout again at the end of the three days, the older group had significantly slower times. So what this was telling us was not only was there less myofibrillar protein synthesis, there's flat out like more recovery time is needed. Simply put, recovery time became extra important. So I'll have a solution for you in that case. Simply put, you needed more rest, okay? Now with this, sleep becomes extra important, okay? So as you're older, it's less about how much protein you get right at the end of your workout and you know proper nutrient replenishment. It, and that is important, but what really becomes important is adequate sleep. So what I suggest is nutritionally, rather than having carbohydrates after a workout, like some people would suggest, as you get older, allocate your carbohydrates towards the evening time. What this is going to do is induce more serotonin and melatonin production that allows you to sleep better. That deeper sleep is going to produce more in the way of a growth hormone pulse, which is going to be better for myofibrillar protein synthesis. Additionally, what you may want to do is stagger your workouts differently. Rather than resistance training five days per week, try resistance training three days per week with slightly longer workouts with adequate rest in between workouts. This becomes much more important. You're like, hey, I'm 50. I go into the gym. I feel fine during my workout, but for some reason I'm thrashed for two days after. That's because your muscle, your, your volume of workouts don't necessarily get affected, but your recovery does. So go for the slightly longer workout, but have longer recovery in between. Okay, that becomes extra important. Next up is going to be having more protein in general. Okay, this is super important. And the American Journal of Physiology published a phenomenal paper that outlined this. Our muscle protein synthesis does get affected by our age, which means that when you look at like, what this study looked at, it looked at how much protein people consumed and how it affected what's called their net balance. Okay, the amount of basically muscle protein breakdown from a workout compared to the muscle protein synthesis. Were they at a net positive or a net negative? A net negative would demonstrate that they're breaking down more muscle than they are actually uh, repairing. We don't want that. So this study divided people into four groups. Two of the groups had 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. 
one of them spread evenly throughout the day, another with slightly more leaning towards the early part of the day. The other groups ate 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, also split either evenly or random boluses, right? Point was, is that one group had almost double the amount of protein. They found with this study that both groups ended up being at a net positive. Okay, so that's great. They were both consuming enough protein, but the 1.5 group, the group that had double the amount of protein had much, much, much higher levels of myofibular protein synthesis. They repaired much more. What this tells us is that the daily recommended allowance of, what, of protein, which is normally about 0.8 per kilogram of body weight, may not be enough if you get older, especially if you're active. So as you get older, it's okay to increase protein. It's not gonna damage you, it's gonna help you, okay? Because protein and muscle is probably one of the most important things when it comes to longevity. You don't wanna waste muscle. You're better off to have a little extra protein and maintain your muscle than not have enough and start atrophying. So double the protein was actually okay. So being able to increase protein becomes so, so, so important. Now you don't have to just you know, start eating loads and loads of steak and load, like I know it can digestively be difficult to start adding more protein, especially as you get older. One of the things I usually recommend is just bring a shake in now and then. It doesn't have to be whey. Usually what I would recommend is like a pea protein or like a pumpkin seed protein or something like that. But now what about adding protein specifically around your workouts? There's a study that was published in the International Journal of Sports Nutrition and Exercise Metabolism that took a look at post-workout uh, protein metabolism and how it affected recovery immediately. So with this, they took a look at subjects that were uh, older, 52 average age, and they had them do leg extension exercises and then do 30 minutes of downhill running, which beats the heck out of your legs if you haven't done it before. Okay, then they had them either consume 0.3 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight every two hours for six hours, or 0.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight every two hours for six hours. Astonishingly, in that short amount of time, after six hours, the double protein group ended up having better performance. They had more strength and more torque of the overall with the uh, leg extensions, and they had lower levels of perceived exhaustion when they did the downhill run again. So even in the short term, the perceived fatigue was better. This is phenomenal research because it tells us that protein really has a big effect even in the short term. This next one is super important. I mean, we know that hydration is important. We know that hydration plays a role with exercise and overall muscle recovery. But what about with age? With age, it's even more pronounced and it's really interesting. There was a study that was published in the journal Athletic Training, first off, that demonstrated that when you're more dehydrated, delayed onset muscle soreness is increased. You get more sore. Okay, great. There's also a fair bit of documented evidence that demonstrates that when you're dehydrated, the overall uh, exercise-induced muscle trauma increases. The muscle damage that comes from exercise is increased. And this is possibly through uh, damaged cellular membrane because of dehydration, number of different things. But with age, it's even more pronounced. There's a study that was published in the journal Physiology that found that dehydration affects the temperature regulation of older people different than younger people. What they found was that when older people were, dehy were dehydrated, excuse me, they would uh, not thermoregulate the same way. Their heat loss reduction wouldn't stop. So like, it's like if a younger person were to start sweating, it would trigger kind of their heat loss to, you know, they'd they end up losing heat, right? With older people, it didn't really happen. It doesn't necessarily sound bad. You're like, I don't mind kind of maintaining heat and sweating more, like it's good for my body, except for the fact that there's no system really regulating that. So the body continues to sweat even after it shouldn't be sweating. If you've ever noticed older people in the gym, like sometimes it seems like they're sweating way more than the younger people, and it seems like they continue to sweat for a while afterwards. Well, that's a legit thing. That is what's going on here. So with that, dehydration becomes so important, and we know that it impairs recovery. So extra water, extra electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium added into the equation become super, super duper important. Now this all couples in with inflammation, okay? After a workout, inflammation is a real thing. We need inflammation to help start recovery, but when it continues on for a long period of time, that's when it impairs recovery. And as we get older, we are not as good at slowing down the inflammatory response, okay? So what we have to do is we have to do things nutritionally to try to mitigate inflammation. One of the first things I recommend is more omega-3s in your diet. Okay, omega-3s have been associated in multiple studies to reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. So your overall recovery might feel better, okay? 
turmeric and ginger when it comes down to joints. Okay, turmeric is well documented in over 2,000 different peer-reviewed studies to have an anti-inflammatory effect when it comes down specifically a lot of stuff with the joints with nuclear factor kappa B, a master regulator of inflammatory responses. So very, very good there. And then ginger, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Preventative Medicine found that ginger uh, kind of mediated some of the soreness or the pain that was associated with exercise-induced joint pain. So sipping on some ginger tea, sipping on some turmeric tea, adding turmeric to meals, curcumin, these are things that actually do play a role with your overall recovery. And very important as far as inflammation is don't have the refined carbs and the sugars, especially surrounding your workout, because that's going to spike inflammation up a lot higher because what happens is the insulin spike also carries with it a spike in inflammation, right? So we don't want this to go on forever. A little bit is fine, but you really do need to modulate that. The last thing I wanna talk about is probably one of the most important things. Sauna over ice bath for you, okay? If you're over 45 or 50, Surrounding a workout, you may think that an ice bath is going to help you feel better and help you recover. It might eliminate some of the pain in the short term, but it's quelling inflammation so much and increasing oxidative stress so much that at your age, it doesn't help you recover. It actually can break you down more. I encourage you to think of ice baths as a separate workout, not in adjunct to. So days you're not working out, do an ice bath as a recovery, sort of mimicking a workout kind of effect. On the days you are working out, sauna at not a ridiculous high heat. Use an infrared sauna, use a dry sauna, use it for recovery and use it to stimulate more blood flow. Use it to stimulate that potential growth hormone pulse that a sauna can have an effect on, but also do it to overall help what's called glymphatic clearance and allow the brain to kind of increase what's called intracranial pressure. It essentially can help you sleep better. So indirectly, a sauna might be the most effective thing that you can do for recovery as far as a modality is concerned outside of nutrition. A cold plunge is a stressor, and we don't want to activate more of this oxidative uh, stress response within the body if we're already taxed from our workout. So as always, just to kind of recoup this, more protein is definitely going to be key, okay? You're going to want to have longer rest periods, okay? Uh, slightly longer volume workouts and longer rest periods. You're gonna want more protein surrounding your workout. You're gonna want carbs at night to help you sleep a little bit better, okay, because that's going to be super, super important. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're hydrated and adding electrolytes in whenever you possibly can. You're gonna wanna add omega-3s to your diet, either through food or supplementation, turmeric and ginger, reduce the sugar intake, and use a sauna over an ice bath. So as always, keep it locked to here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.